Hey, Carl, thanks so much. Uh, James Gorman, thank you so much for being here. I believe it's your first interview on TV since announcing plans to step down as CEO. So I'd love to first kick things off by asking you, why now? And I thought we were going to talk about earnings. We will. Elizabeth. We'll get there. We'll get there. Um, <laughs> you know, it's for several years I've said I'll step down five years ago in about five years, three years ago in three years. And, you know, nobody believes you. They just assume you stay in these jobs as long as you can. And I, you know, I'm really into having plans and being intentional about stuff, whether it's strategic planning or succession planning, it's the same stuff. These are processes. So we felt, the board and I, that by announcing it at the annual meeting and say, I won't be in the job by the next annual meeting, was that's clear. That's like 12 months. And we're two months into it. So I just thought it was a great way to set it up, a very elegant way. Build it around the annual meeting, not a great quarter, a bad quarter, a birthday or... Oh, some other event. Build it around strategic planning process, the annual meeting, and then we'll do it at some point, you know, in these 12 months when we feel like there are a few things I want to get through and help just manage through, like the CCAR test we just did, the Buzzle stuff that I'm sure you'll talk about, uh, this quarter's earnings, which, you know, we felt were really strong. A um, couple of other things. So I want to help the new CEO get off to a good start by cleaning the decks. And as I said, you know, present a clean plate for them. How close is the board to narrowing in on a candidate? They have a process. Um, and, you know, they're following their process really well. I mean, I'm staying away from it because it's ultimately the board decision. And at some point, I'm sure they'll ask for sort of my recommendation. But they, they're doing their job. I mean, it's what boards should do. They have a very systematic process. It's run by the uh, Comp Development Succession Committee chaired by Dennis Nally. And then it goes to the full board where Tom Gloster is the lead independent director. And they'll all vote. But it's great. I mean, this is the way it's supposed to work, right? It's not supposed to be some shock and, and drama. It's, it's a process. And what matters is they pick somebody who has the skill set to lead this type of company, right, which is a global, regulated, uh, complex bank. And fortunately, we have three phenomenal candidates. So it's set up really well. Well, we've got 10 more months uh, to figure out who that will be. Um, but let's talk about earnings. Up to 10 more months. Up to 10 more months, yeah. within the 10 months. Yeah. Um, so stock rallying today on these earnings, which were mixed results. But a big piece of the market reaction, I think, has to do with the outlook on capital markets. Uh, yeah. You mentioned that, especially toward the end of the quarter, that the tone has really changed. Do you think that investment banking and, and trading, some of the weakness there has bottomed at this point? I don't think the stock's rallied on that. I mean, I, you know, you never know. Um, I, th I thought the stock would be up today. In fact, we have a little pool with my team. And I was definitely positive on it for, you know, three things. One, the capital ratio was great, 15.5%. Some would say we're too conservative. But I don't mind being a little conservative, particularly when you've got new capital rules coming. So that was huge. Remember, our CCAR requirement is 12.9%. So we're carrying uh, 260 basis points of excess. That's a, that's a positive. Number two, uh, three, three cycles ago, we doubled the dividend. Last year, we took it up 7.5 cents. This year, we took it up 7.5 cents a quarter. Uh, so we're now yielding about 4% dividend. So for shareholders, that's pretty neat. You know, investment banks typically did not pay 4% dividends. The reason we're paying that is half of us is a wealth and asset management business. So that was a good number. And the third one was the net new money stuff is just extraordinary. Mm -hmm. uh, between wealth and asset management to bring in $100 billion, um, we're at $200 billion year to date. Uh, you know, to give you a sense of, of context, um, a lot of people thought we should have bid for First Republic. First Republic's total assets, wealth assets, were about $290 billion. Mm. We brought in two-thirds of First Republic in six months without having to buy the company and go through all the drama of, of integration and, and taking us off our core strategy. So I think they were the key numbers. And then when you step back from that, the weakness were things where you go, of course they're weak. I mean, who's bringing companies public right now? Very few. Who's doing M&A deals? Very few. Trading is muted as the Fed adjusts to sort of the end of their rate hiking cycle. But that will change. So you can see through that. What you need to know is the bones, capital, capital policy as evidenced by dividend and growth as evidenced by net new money are strong. The rest is just, it's stuff. I mean, this is what we do for a business and that will improve. And that was the tone we expressed.